其实喜剧一直是。Actually, comedy is always welcomed all over the world, but in China, it's been growing in popularity in just the past decade. Comedy is, in fact, relatively new in China because of the way it serves as a reflection of Chinese society. Why? Well, on the Chinese mainland, we have undergone a long period of political change lasting several decades, and frankly speaking, it's been very difficult to make people laugh. They were living with heavy burdens, and people were not happy. Life during that time was really tiring and difficult. But in the past decade, comedies or even farces with exaggerated storylines are welcomed. They make everyone happy, and we believe that explains what is behind the growing prevalence of comedy. More importantly, we see changes in China and also in the mindset of the nation's people. Now they can accept more things and even make fun of many serious issues. This is, in fact, a reflection of mental relaxation. So I think for the coming years, maybe for many years, this kind of movie will still be interesting to many directors who will try their hands at making one. But I personally am not a genius or master of comedies and farces, at least not when compared with someone like Hong Kong's Stephen Chow and some other directors on the Chinese mainland who know more. When the film *A Simple Noodle Story* was screened at the Berlin International Film Festival this year, I was there, in a theater that seats an audience of a thousand, a major arena. I was there with actors Sung Hong Lee and Yan Ni sitting nearby. Now, in the movie *A Simple Noodle Story*, I tried to trim down the humorous language or shorten lines, and instead focused on the fun of the behavior you see in the characters. At least during the screening I attended, the grand opening show, the audience was laughing from beginning to end, and the audience was mostly foreigners, Germans, and other Europeans. They all were very happy. So this gave me an inspiration. It all depends on the type of comedy. If a comedy is driven by language humor, scoffing and mocking, that is difficult for those who don't understand exactly what you're talking about. But if you do some adjustment, just focus on some slapstick and fun action, exaggerated behaviors, and some universal themes, it seems to be much easier for an international audience to understand. That form of comedy resonates with them. Honestly, my movies have had a great deal of support from my Hong Kong counterparts in order for them to be completed. Since we made Hero, basically, we have all relied on Hong Kong technicians. Martial arts directors and other professionals for many different aspects of production. As far as Hong Kong being a vanguard for commercial films, I think the city has a superb record in Asia and Southeast Asia in particular, and has therefore nurtured many outstanding movie professionals and established an excellent film industry system. And of course, Hong Kong has very good artistic films too. So in reality, Hong Kong movie professionals play crucial roles on the Chinese mainland nowadays, and that's not only for films but also in television. They bring significant influence to the economy and culture of the Chinese mainland. Today, we see many Hong Kong film professionals choosing the Chinese mainland as a new stage to show off their talents. So their role and influence on Chinese films cannot be underestimated. The rise of a country and a nation is the most important factor for its film industry development. Many of us here believe that Hollywood movies are formidable and threaten the world, but Hollywood's influence is linked to the rise of the United States. In Beijing, we'd say they are so strong. Their influence leads trends all over the world and promote the export of their pop culture to other countries. As far as films from Asia or China going international, I think that won't be a problem once our international position, national power, and financial capability increase, or when China really becomes the big brother. It will not even be questioned. You wouldn't ask the Americans, "Are you planning to move forward in the world?" They believe they are the center of the world. The fact that this problem exists implies that we are still in a relatively weak position for now. 
That's why I believe the most important thing is that when your country and your nation truly grow stronger, it is no longer a problem for it to have a greater influence on the world. I believe you should have confidence and persistence. At least for me, that's been the way forward as a director. Now, there are various beliefs and theories held by those in the film industry, and the world is full of different views. It's very difficult to have a unified strategy. But confidence and persistence are crucial for any creative individual. As far as making a career as a director, like many other jobs, you have to give up or sacrifice many things to achieve your goals. As a director, you should bring passion to this job and your passion can in turn give you the support you need. In fact, it's not really a fabulous job, and it isn't particularly enjoyable work, especially when you're on the road to realizing your creation. The problem is, you are never completely satisfied.